So here what we're going to do is we're going to apply this terry net stockinette to the foot. What I want to do is roll this up the leg, just like this. I want to leave a little bit of a tail right there. And here, you have to maintain the 90 degree angle for that to work. Now I want to peel this back, and I'm going to apply my dressing. I like the Siltec Soreback dressing. It is a bacteria binding material with a vertical absorption foam. I'll place that right over the site of the DFU, the simulated DFU. Now I'm going to use some Soreback ribbon. This Soreback ribbon, because he has his tinea, what I like to do is just weave this in between his toes. Between the digits, this will absorb some of the tinea. Also keeps it from being skin on skin contact to reduce that risk of maceration. Now that my dressing's in place, I like to fold this back over here like this. Make sure he maintains 90 degrees. I want to make sure that this flap, you know, this little fold, just falls over. I don't want to pull it and hyperextend his toes. Take this self-adhesive felt foam pad, attach it to my landmark, which is a tibial crest, and I want to apply this right down the spine as I'm applying it. I'm going to come to the end, and what I want to do is I want to cut this foam on the paper. So if I try to cut before, it's going to stick to the adhesive. I'm going to latch this piece down like this. And I want to just massage that down so it's nice and wrinkle free. Next, I'd like to take these pads, self adhesive pads for the malay, attach that over the bony prominence without overlapping it onto the other felt. Place one on the medial side, again, not overlapping on the felt. Then I'm going to take this perforated black foam. I'm going to place this right over the toes to create a toe box. I'm going to pinch the sides together. When I'm pinching the sides together, you'll see that it'll make a nice little template for you to cut from, keeping them at 90 degrees. Then take your scissors and you want to cut away from the patient. Cutting away because if he has any splayed toe, you may nick it. And so, you want to make it nice and contoured to the skin. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Specialist 100. So what I'd like to do is cover the black foam. And I'd like to wrap this going around his foot, giving it some tension as I go along with the barrel on top. Now that I've put some on the foot, I've applied it there. I want to apply two horseshoes. And then I want to do two stirrups. Applying this on as wrinkle free as possible. I'm going to take this second roll. And what I like to do here is patch this up. Patching it up like this, just so that I can get a nice 50% overlap, so that I can get it to lay down as wrinkle free as possible. At the same time, minimal padding. So I like to take that around there twice. Is I just want to rub this down so it's nice and smooth, and you'll see how contour it is to the skin. Okay. Now when it comes to the cast tape, what separates this cast from other cast tapes on the market are the conformability and the stretchability of this tape. I'm just going to drop that in the water. So I'm going to apply this on just like this. I'm going to give it some tension as I go. As long as my barrel is close to the body, I can give it some tension. I'm going to go 50% overlap. Now notice here, I'm not going to figure eight around the ankle. I'm just going to go right around that ankle. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go 50% and leave the tape on the tape that I'm working on. Keep moving at 90 degrees. 
And I'm going to start this one at the base or the metatarsal head, which is right here. So I don't catch a dog ear. I want to come around 50% overlap. You see my little tail there. Mm -hmm. I can catch this when I come around again, no figure eight, right around the ankle, going 50% overlap. Now, this third layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where this roll ended and roll this one proximal to distal. Leave a little bit of a gap here at my marker, giving some tension as I can go with the barrel close to the body. No figure eight, keeping them at 90, ending this tape right there. Now what I do is I grab my board, I place the board underneath, and I'm going to give some pressure here. Just have you relax. The lamination process has started. Now, the key to the mold is behind the malaylite to the gastroc insertion, because what we're doing is offloading into this cone of the cast. So if I keep them at 90 degrees, laminate this cast, giving that nice tension behind the Achilles to the gastroc insertion. Laminate all the way around. Try to avoid pressure on directly on the malaylite, just behind it. Okay. So as I'm giving that pressure on the bottom, I'm trying to create that flat surface. That flat surface is what's going to redistribute the energy into the cone. Now, the weight of the person determines how many rolls you will use. If a patient weighs 240 pounds or more, I want to use all five rolls. I like to keep it in this position. It is solidifying right now, but you can feel it. If you had gloves on, you would feel the exothermic reaction. That exothermic reaction is a natural occurrence between the chemical that helps the cast get hard and dry. I've achieved the flat surface between the fifth, the first metatarsal heads, and the calcaneus, and that's the flat surface. So I'm going to take this off. And you'll see the flat surface that we created just like that. The next thing that we're going to do is why don't we switch places here. So you go ahead and open that package, place that in the water, and you can gently squeeze that out now. Push this tail right here at the end the, with the barrel up and go ahead and wrap that around. Give it some tension as you go. You're not going to make it any tighter because the cast is already set. So this is reinforcing? It's just reinforcing the base of the cast. Okay. So you're going to come around here. Now on this one, I want you to do is turn it right here like this. Catch that bottom. Catch this bottom edge. Give it that tension as you go and wrap it 50% over 50% going distal to proximal. Use your palms. A nice trick here is hold here with your one hand, and laminate on the heel, and then switch hands. So then again, if your patient weighed 240 pounds or more, the next roll which would be another three inch roll, would start from the base of the head, metatarsal heads going distal to proximal. Now, notice that we've already done that in. It's all smoothed out, right? right. Keep laminating that in. Okay, let's switch places. Now, this portion of the cast, you'll see that. The cast is done. It's almost hard. It's already solidified. I had this extra material. And I like to take a strip, fold this in half, and wrap it right around the cuff of the cast, and then pull this down. And I'm going to leave it just like this. 
Now what I've done is I've created this nice little cushion right here. The nice customization of the cast is it's one cast fits all. Regardless if they're Pez Planus, Pez Cavus, or if they have Charco, it's the same foot. The same principles will apply. So I'm going to apply a cast shoe. I'm going to have them stand here. What I like to do is notice, hands on your hips, that the shoulders are level, the hips are level, and his knees would be even. You look at the other leg and how contour the cast is to his body, how low profile it is to his other shoe. And with that, let's have the patient take a walk. So after the patient returns to the clinic, the first initial cast goes on for three days. After that, they seem to tolerate it okay, we'll come back on a weekly basis. Once they come back on the weekly basis, you're going to remove the shoe. I'm going to take this flap up that we put on, and I'm just going to take off that cuff of uh, padding. Once I get that out, I want to draw some lines where I want to cut. My Landmarks are the malalai. So I want to cut in front of this malalai. And I want to cut underneath the toes. So if this one is in front of the malalai, here's my malalai on this side. This one is going to go behind it. Cutting it that way will give you a hinged effect. It will create that hinged effect, which will be important. So the saw. Here we go. Once I have the cast cuts, I just pull and remove the cast just like that. I'll have him lift it up. Take this right off. One of the other things I like to have them do is I want you to hold that with two hands. Okay. Very light. What would you say? Very light. Of course it oh, is. Very light. Squeeze it. How rigid is it? Yeah. It's not very flexible. And so the rigidity, the light weight are bonuses that your competition doesn't have that. I hope you found this video useful in helping you sell the Cutomat Offloader Select. Thank you for watching.